everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use trigonometric substitution with a tangent substitution to evaluate an integral. To complete this problem, we'll set up the problem by writing down everything we know, make our substitutions, simplify and evaluate the integral, and then back substitute to get our final answer in terms of x. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use trigonometric substitution to evaluate the integral of the square root of 9 plus 16x squared. Now, as with any trigonometric substitution, the first thing you want, to, you want to do is identify what kind of format here you have in your function. So in our case, we have the format a squared plus u squared, where a is a constant and u is something that involves our variable x. So in our case, a is 3 because 3 squared is 9, u is 4x because 4x squared is 16x squared. So we notice that we have the format a squared plus u squared. If we had u squared minus a squared or a squared minus u squared, we would need to use a different substitution and a different identity. But when you identify a squared plus u squared in your function, then we'll be using the substitution u equals a times tangent of theta, and the trigonometric identity, one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So once we identify the form that we have, and in this case again, we have the constant term plus the variable term here, we need to identify a and u. We already did that, but the way that we do it is by taking the square of the constant and the square of the variable term. So the square root, sorry, the square root. So the square root of 9 we know is 3, and therefore a is equal to 3. The square root of 16x squared we know is 4x, and so we know that 4x is equal to u. Now once we have u and a, we can plug them into our substitution here, u equals a tangent of theta. When we do that, of course, we'll get 4x is equal to 3 times tangent of theta. And now we're at the beginning of the setup part of our problem. There are several things that we want to solve for before we jump into a trigonometric substitution problem that'll make the rest of the problem a lot easier and smoother for us. So the first one is starting with this identity. And then from here, we always want to make sure that we solve for x. So we'll divide both sides by 4 and get 3 fourths tangent theta. We always want to solve for tangent of theta, so we'll divide both sides by 3 to get that. So tangent theta equals 4 thirds x, and we always want to solve for theta. So in order to take theta, we or to find theta, we'll take arctan, or the inverse tangent function, of both sides. When we take arctan of tangent of theta, arctan and tangent cancel with one another, and we're just left with theta. On the right hand side, of course, we're left with arctan of 4 thirds x. The last thing we want to solve for is the derivative of x, which we'll call dx. So we'll take the derivative of 3 fourths tangent of theta and we'll get 3 fourths secant squared of theta d theta. We always want to make sure we add this d theta notation when we take the derivative. So that's all of the setup that we need to do outside of sketching our right triangle. So whenever we have a trigonometric substitution problem, it can be helpful to have the right triangle when we get to the end of our problem. So we always draw the right triangle in this way, and we call this here the angle theta. When we're dealing with the triangle for tangent, the adjacent side here on the bottom is a, and in our case, a is 3. The opposite side is always u, and in our case, u is equal to 4x. And the hypotenuse is always a squared, sorry, the square root of a squared plus u squared, which keep in mind is the original format that we identified in our function, a squared plus u squared, which in our case is the square root of 9 plus 16x squared. So that's it for the setup part of our problem. Now that we have everything set up, we want to go ahead and make substitutions into our integral. So what we'll do is we'll substitute in for x and dx. So we'll get the integral of the square root of 9 plus 16. Here's where we substitute for x. Remember that we got 3 fourths times tangent theta for x. So we'll get 3 fourths tangent 
theta squared. This is all inside our square root. And then we plug in for dx, which we know is 3 fourths times secant squared theta. And then we also have this d theta, which we'll just leave outside of the parentheses because we know that's going to be off here by itself. Once we've made our substitutions, our next step is going to be to simplify this integral as much as possible until we get it to a point where we can evaluate the integral. Right now, we don't know how to take the integral of what's inside here, so uh, we need to simplify it. And the way that we're going to do that is a couple of things. Any constants that we have, we want to move out in front of the integral. So the 3 fourths here, which is a constant coefficient on everything inside here that's multiplied together, that can come outside of our integral. So we'll get 3 fourths times the integral here. Let's move the secant squared of theta out in front of the square root sign. And then inside our square root, we'll go ahead and multiply out here this square, or distribute the square. So what we'll get is 16 times 9 over 16 tangent squared of theta. That's the end of our square root. And then we have d theta. Now, as you can see, inside of our square root here, we'll get the 16s to cancel. And what we'll be left with is just, we can write it up here, 9 plus 9 times tangent squared of theta. We can go ahead and factor out a 9 here, so we'll get 9 times 1 plus tangent squared theta when we factor out a 9. Keep in mind, this is what's going to be inside our square root. And once we factor out what's inside that square root, we've now gotten to a point where our trigonometric identity comes into play. So remember we said we would be using this identity, 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. Well, notice now that we have 1 plus tangent squared theta here inside of our square root sign. So we're going to go ahead and make the substitution for secant squared theta. And when we do that, we'll get secant squared theta here. And then inside of our square root, remember we, uh, we canceled our 16s, we factored out a 9, and what we were left with was this 9 times 1 plus tangent squared theta, we're going to go ahead and make the substitution and say 9 times secant squared theta. So 9 secant squared theta d theta. And at this point, we can go ahead and evaluate 9 secant squared theta. We can evaluate the, the square root of that. And when we do that, we'll get 3 fourths times secant squared theta times the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of secant squared is just secant. So we'll get secant of theta d theta. At this point, we'll go ahead and bring the 3 out in front here. It'll get multiplied by the 3 fourths. We'll be left with 9 fourths times the integral. And normally, we would combine this secant squared theta and secant of theta into secant cubed of theta. But let's go ahead and leave them separate because that'll make it easier for us to proceed with our integration. So we just pulled the 3 out in front, we have the 9 fourths coefficient. At this point with secant of theta times secant squared of theta, the easiest way to evaluate this integral is to use integration by parts where u is equal to secant of theta and du, which we'll take in a second, will actually say u is equal to secant of theta and because we're using integration by parts we'll say that dv is equal to the rest of the integral, secant squared theta d theta. Remember that with integration by parts, we identify u and dv, and then we take the derivative of u to get du, and the integral of dv to find v. So the derivative of secant of theta is secant theta tangent theta d theta, so that'll be our du, and the integral of secant squared theta d theta is just tangent of theta, so that'll be our v. Now that we have these, remember that the integration by parts formula, we'll take these and we'll plug them into u times v minus the integral of v times du. So what we'll get here is 9 fourths times u times v, so secant theta tangent theta for u times v, minus the integral of v times du. So you can see that we'll get secant theta tangent squared theta, 
one tangent coming from V and the other coming from DU, and then just D theta here. Before we go any further, we should make note that what we found here was actually equal to the integral that we started with up here. So we're starting with 9 fourths times the integral of secant times secant squared of theta, which in this case we'll just call secant cubed theta d theta. And through the integration by parts process, we found what's over here on the right hand side. So we have 9 fourths times what we got when we performed integration by parts. This will be helpful to us later. But for now, what we're going to do is use that trigonometric identity that we had again, that we had used um, before. We're going to use it again inside our integral here. We're going to plug secant squared of theta minus 1 in for tangent squared of theta. So notice that if we just subtract 1 from both sides of our trigonometric identity, we'll solve for tangent squared of theta and we'll get secant squared of theta minus 1. So when we plug in for tangent here, secant squared of theta minus 1, what we can do is distribute the secant of theta across these two here. So we'll get secant of theta times secant squared of theta gives us secant cubed of theta. And then we'll get secant of theta times negative 1, which is negative secant of theta d theta. We're at kind of a cool point now because what we can do is break apart our integral and we can, we can actually solve. So let's go ahead and distribute the 9 fourths across each of these terms as we go. So we'll get 9 fourths times secant theta tangent theta minus 9 fourths times the integral of secant cubed of theta. And we're going to break these into two separate integrals. So we'll go ahead and put d theta here. Now we have a minus and a minus, which will cancel. We'll, let, we'll be left with plus 9 fourths times the integral of secant of theta d theta. What we see now is that we actually have this negative 9 fourths secant cubed of theta d theta on the right hand side, and we have a 9 fourths secant cubed of theta d theta on the left hand side. So if we add this integral over here on the right hand side, the negative 9 fourths secant theta d theta, if we add that quantity to both sides, we'll move it over to the left and we'll get 9 fourths plus 9 fourths, which is 18 fourths. So we'll get 18 fourths times the integral of secant cubed theta d theta will be equal to 9 fourths times secant theta tangent theta plus our third term over here, 9 fourths times the integral of secant of theta d theta. Now all we need to do is take the integral here of secant of theta and then go ahead and divide both sides by 18 fourths and we'll solve for our original integral which was the secant cubed of theta d theta. So let's say we'll get 18 fourths times the integral of secant cubed of theta d theta is equal to, we'll leave this term alone and we'll take the integral of secant of theta, which is the natural log of the absolute value of secant of theta plus tangent theta, and then we'll add plus c to account for the constant of integration while we're at it. Notice now that we've taken um, all of the integrals on the right hand side, and in order to solve for the integral we started with, secant cubed of theta d theta, we just need to go ahead and divide both sides by 18 over 4. That's like multiplying both sides by 4 over 18. So when we do that, when we will cancel it from the left here, and it'll be like multiplying by 4 over 18 and multiplying by 4 over 18 here. What you can see is that we'll get the 4s to cancel from the numerator and denominator, and we're left with 9 over 18, which of course is the same as 1 half, 9 over 18. So what we get is 1 half times secant theta tangent theta plus one half natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. 
Our last and final step will be to convert the answer we got here into terms of x instead of terms of theta. We need to get this back in terms of x because x is what we started with. The way that we'll do that is to use our right triangle that we drew in our setup process. So we're going to use the right triangle to find values for secant and tangent. So what we'll get here is 1 half. Secant, you know, is the reciprocal of cosine. So we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So what we get here is the square root of 9 plus 16 x squared, all divided by our adjacent side, 3. We know that tangent is opposite over adjacent, so our opposite side is 4x and our adjacent side is 3. Then we get 1 half times the natural log, and again here we have our value for secant, so the square root of 9 plus 16x squared, all divided by 3, plus the value for tangent, which we know is 4x over 3, and then plus c. And now it's just a matter of simplifying as much as we can. So you can see in our numerator here of our first term, we have the constant 4, 4x out in front. In the denominator, we have 2 times 3 times 3, which will give us 18. So 4 over 18 will simplify to 2 over 9. So we'll have here 2x times the square root of 9 plus 16 x squared all over 9. And then here we'll have 1 half times the natural log. We can combine the fractions that are inside our natural log here. So we'll get 4x plus the square root of 9 plus 16x squared all divided by 3 because we have a common denominator with the 3. And then we have plus c. And that's it. This is the final answer for the integral of our original function, the square root of 9 plus 16x squared dx, using trigonometric substitution with the tangent substitution. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.